What's going on guys? Welcome to another Uncommon Cube Draft here on magictheinternet.yu-gi-oh slash uh, I don't know. I don't know where we're going with that. Alright, so I like Untethered Express. This card is surprisingly good in this cube. I have been consistently getting wrecked by this card. It also doesn't commit us to a color. Uh, to no one's surprise, this card is busted even in the Uncommon Cube, I think. I think. It's beat me twice. And um, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to take it here. Keeps us open. Morning Star. I like Orzhov's signal a lot. That's a good one. That's pretty much the only thing I can really think of in here that's really piquing my interest. I'll take Signet. Again, it doesn't commit us to anything, and I don't think any of those cards are worth committing to, so. Cube? What are you saying? That is, that is, those are some words, Irish. Those are some words. That is a word. Thank you. EOT Impulse, thank you so much for nine months in a row, dude. Really appreciate it. Next three color set we want, we go to, I want to see Blightning Helix. Blightning plus Lightning Helix. I <laughs> think it'd be sweet. It probably would be sweet. I mean, I, I think for four mana, you can have them discard two. Man, maybe. That seems pretty strong. It might be a five mana card. This is the Uncommon Cube, yes. It's definitely not Dominaria, so that's for sure. That's for true. Lightning Helix does sound beautiful. I agree with you. I like an Ash Barons. What else we got here? A Suchi, which I don't care about. Survival Cash, which is okay. Treasure Keeper, another card that's pretty good in the colorless deck that we're building so far. Yeah, I actually think it's Ash Barons or Treasure Keeper, and I'm leaning more towards Treasure Keeper here. Yeah, I think it's totally fine. Again, like we're not committed to anything, which is which is nice. It's a nice place to be. I like Rekso Rekshasa Grave Caller. That guy's really strong. Five mana for a three six, uh, and you're usually going to exploit. We can exploit like Treasure Keeper, and it gets two zombies. It's actually seven power. Um, it's also one black, which is not super hard to do. To do Vampire Nighthawk also seems very good. Uh, isn't Blighting Helix just Crackling Doom? I mean, not no, but the, those are totally different things. They're not gaining life. You're not making them discard too. Like, the effect-wise, those are very, very different cards. Plus two, plus two, Flying, and is a White Angel. Eh. Cunning Spark Mage is also very good. This card's act this, this pack is actually probably where we're going to make a decision. I'm going to take the... I'm going to take the Grave Caller because... It's only single black, so it's still easy to cast. Oh, gosh. 32 Defender, worth a Regenerate. I'll just take Fatal Push here. I like a Fatal Push. This guy flips into a 4-4. Four, 4-2? Four. Four, That's worse. I'll take 4-4. Four, four. Or I'll take a Fatal Push, rather. Taskmaster is kind of meh. I like Myriad Landscape a lot, actually. Uh, this guy just bolsters over a creature with a plus one connect to tap target creature. That guy's pretty bonkers. I don't know if it's great in, the, uh, in this cube. But could be. What do you do? Whenever it becomes blocked by a creature, deals two damage to that creature. Sure. That guy's hard to deal with. Kite seal seems great. Maybe. Maybe you're right. Actually, that could be. That could be fair. I actually agree. Elite scale guard was insane in, in favor Forge Limited. This guy was bonkers. I could see Freebooter. It also doesn't commit us to white despite our Orzov Signet, which is nice. Ulcerate is probably the pick. Gatekeeper's good, but it's triple black. Velar Stance is good, but it's kind of narrow. I think I'd rather just have the Ulcerate, which is just a cheap removal spell. Doomfall could be the pick. Chain Creature is an inf Insect Artifact with base stuff at 01, has an Destructible Lose all Creature Time, sure. Probably just Doomfall here. 
Man, and we come back to the first pack again. It's just Blightning. <laughs> Blightning seems pretty strong. That's a rocky tar pit. Hmm. These are the questions we ask ourselves. I'll take a Blightning here. Stab Wound is cute, but like... They're just going to chump block it or exile it or... What have you. I think it's still the pick, though. Just learned to work today. I get to start catching all your streams now, which is great, but it's because I'm moving to third shift. Oh, man. From third shift to... From second shift to third shift. Uh, I like Ash Barons, actually. I also like Survival Cash. Yeah, I'm going to take Survival Cash here. I think it's better than Singer Autocrat. I also think it's probably better than Ash Barons. Because we don't know where, where... I don't know what colors we are. Maybe Ash Barons is better, but I don't know what colors we are. And I, I, presuming we're two colors, I don't think we care that much about basic land cycling. If we're planning on going into, like, two or, two or more colors... Oh, uh, Vampire Night Out coming back was great. Uh, more than two colors, rather, then I think we're in, in good shape to take the Ash Barons. But I'm, ideally, we're only having two colors in our deck, so... Three people in third shift quit? Oh, man, I hope that's not what you're in for. You're just like, all right, man, I'm out. I can't do this. What does third shift entail? Like 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. or 6 a.m. or something? That seems ridiculous. That's my guess. Carrion Wall? It's an easy card to sacrifice to the Rankshasa. Rankshasa. That guy could be hard to deal with. Sack a creature other than him. So if this is your only guy, it's good. Uh, I'm going to take the Grave Upheaval because it does. Have, it also has basic land cycling and we have the Blightning. I don't even need 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. is mine. All right, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. It also takes a very specific type of person who can uh, who can deal with that kind of sleep schedule, too. I think I used to work, I used to have a job where I worked from like 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. It was like a 10-hour shift. And then I would get home and sleep from like 6.30 to like 3 p.m. So I'd wake up at like 3 and I'd feel like I kind of had my day back a little bit. But it was still tough. It was still a very tough schedule to have. Um, so presuming we're red. Carrion, carrier Thrall is a dude. Hordling Outburst is a thing, but double double red is not really ideal here. Also, we could just not be red. We could just be white. Which leaves us for Stone Cloaker. Darksteel Ingot is just an option. I think it might just be Carrier Thrall. It's good with uh it's good for crewing, it's good for exploiting. Yeah. Whenever they need it is pretty much uh Pretty much how it goes, unfortunately. I do like Cloud Blazer a lot. <laughs> Who cares? You're not picking that? That's a good point. Oh, Bituminous Blast. All right, they're solidifying us in the... This art is so funny to me. Like, what's even going on in this? <laughs> Look how ridiculous this guy. I love Jeff, Jeff Maricola's art, but this is just funny. I want to take Bituminous Blast. That's pretty okay. We can bring this guy back in, bring this guy in, and now we got a, now we got a little little cohesion here. Ooh, Enslave. Enslave seems very good. Am I just crazy here? Is Sunset here real good? Tap two, draw a card. You forget to draw three, and then you get to scry for the rest of the game. Chris, you think it was cut over Bituminous Blast? My god. I, guess, I mean, it's better for the mana, 100%, but... Yeah, I like Enslave a lot. That card seems bonkers.
Arcane Teachings was actually pretty good when they had it against us. Here's a little Breaker of Armies. Oh, a Terminate. Terminate seems very good. Stir of the Sands is also pretty good. I think it's just Terminate. Terminate's probably the best piece of removal you're going to get. Uncommon cube creatures being largely value ones makes Enslave worse than normal. So yeah, it's still great. <laughs> nice. Nice. I think Terminate's an easy addition for the uh, the red-black we're trying for here. Terminate's a nice replacement for Cut as well, so. Hmm. I'm a big Essence, Essence Extraction fan. Are there any broken combos with this guy? I doubt it. I really doubt it. I'm going to take Essence Extraction. I'm just going to take all the one-for-one one, one, for one removal. And then we're just going to win off, like... Wreck Shasa Grave Crawler, Caller, uh, Enslave, and like Untethered Express. Um, Bloodbone Vampire, whenever you gain life. Rage form is like what? It's a two two, and then it gets double strike or something. When it enters battlefield, an aura with enchant it manifests some great lever attached. Rage form to it. Yeah, it's got double strike. So if you flip it, it's really good. Create two devils. It's an instant. That's actually not bad. Uh no, kite kite sail freebooter has the new wording. So if they kill it before you actually it resolves, then they don't get the card. I was actually pleasantly surprised with a Rogue's Passage, but I actually think it's like... I think it's just Dance with Devils here. It's like removal and a trick, which is kind of cool. Pack is not great. Fire servant. If it runs well, you should do energy deals double that damage instead. That's actually not terrible considering we have a uh, bit blast and blightning. That's interesting. I don't know if it's a grave robber here. We had grave robber once and it was kind of slow. I'll take it. Maybe we get some good stuff for it. Um, there's a Juniper and a Ranger. Speak of the Devil. Unstable Obelisk is a thing. This pack not fantastic for us. This is a ramp spell that does kill a thing at some point. This guy's just big though, right? He's got trample. Sure, I'll take that guy. Planning to adopt a dog? Seen any advice? Um, it's hard to give just general advice because there's a like it, it takes a lot. Dogs are there's a lot going on. Whatever. We're not gonna. We're not, I don't want to pick up any white cards here just because it's. Uh, this guy might just be worth splashing if we get a way to do it, just because it's a four-four life linker. Um, I'm going to take Swift Foot Boots. Plus two, plus two, and flying, and sack to other creatures to regenerate. If this had lifelink, I think it would be great, but I want to just take it to Husk here, see what, see what happens there. Breaker of Armies... That could be a, a nice dude. That's a nice little finishing gentleman. Oh! Take Vampire. Take Trove. All right.
Oh, Crumbling Necropolis. That's pretty good. Sigh of the Shinobi. No. No, no. I like Gifted Aetherborn. I like Gifted Aetherborn more now that we drafted uh, Blood Bond Vampire, which I think is probably better than... Actually, this guy's a 5-4 with Trample for 4. That's really strong. Locks on Warhammer is probably pretty broken, though. I mean, it was great when we played it. There's also a, uh, a Blight... We'd have Lightning Helix and Blightning. It's pretty good. I think it's either born over Loxodon Warhammer. Interesting. Dogs are the best. I agree with you. Hmm. Juggernaut, you're out. I do like, yeah, I do like the Nighthawk blood. I do like the Nighthawk, uh, yeah, I'm going to go Aetherborn because we got Nighthawk. So we got like Nighthawk and Aetherborn into Nighthawk, which is pretty sweet. Oh man, Death Reaper Chul. Jeez. This is almost worth cutting the red for, to be quite honest. Oh, crying out loud. This card was absolutely bonkers against us in the last cube draft we did. I was putrefying here, which is... Also pretty funny. Kona Flames are pretty strong. Goes well with Fire Servant where it doubles the damage. Yeah, Death Ripper Patrol is ridiculous. <laughs> Yargle in here is just super comical, right? Uh, I think it's actually one of these two. God, I think it's Cone. I want to take Cone because it's just a better card for us. I like Phyrexian Gargantua. That draws us two cards. That's pretty good. Oh, Yargle plus Hammer, the old 12 3. Lifelink. Savage Lands. In case that Ritual comes back, that's pretty good. There's also him to Torok, which seems really strong in this cube. I think it's him to Torok here. If we're two colors, I'm not too concerned with my mana. Deathwind's a nice removal spell. Evernight Shade is a nice creature. Victor. Why don't I take out the Signet? It's not that great. Take out the Boots. I don't think we need them here. I don't like Stab Wound that much. I'm also, a Downfall's probably better than the sideboard. Um, it's probably Deathwind here. We're just going to have an infinite removal. Oh, Barter and Blood seems great. What does this guy do? Formable creatures you control get Menace until end of turn. If you have 8 power. 4, 5 for 5. That's not bad. Merciless Executioner. What are we sacking? Anything really good? Not really. Uh, attacking creatures get plus 1, plus 1. As long as untap if you can... Creature would do a common damage for it. That's actually. I think someone told us to take this last time. I think it's actually pretty good. I don't know if it's good in this deck that doesn't have as many creatures, 11 creatures, but. It's gotta be Barter and Blood, right? Oh, it's each player, though. Yeah, that's not as good as I'm thinking. Take Executioner here. I don't know. That pick was kind of iffy. Um. I'll just take Roller Maker because it's the only card we'll consider playing, really. Uh, I like Weapon Craft Enthusiast. It gives us uh, things to exploit or sacrifice with the gate the uh, Merciless Executioner. We have a ton of removal in our deck so far, which is pretty good. I think Kite Self Rebooter is also probably a sideboard card, maybe? Yeah, him to Torak into Blighting seems pretty sweet.
I don't know if Whispers is fast enough for this cube. I haven't done enough cubes in this format to know. Whispers could just be too slow. Do we still run Treasure Keeper? Yeah, I think Treasure Keeper is just fine, especially if you're uh, like, what do you call it? Rex, Rex Shasta Grave Calling next turn. Yeah, Treasure Keeper is great. Oh, wow. I'm going to take that and hope the Savage Lands comes back. And I will 100% play this if the Savage Lands comes back. Grave, Grave Upheaval is also a basic land cycler, so... Uh, Peace Strider is good for the sideboard. I don't feel good about it, but... About it coming back, Rob, that is, but... Could just take out Blood Fury Giant. This guy's really big, though. Oh, if the vivid, vivid, if the vivid, vivid marsh comes back, that's pretty sweet. Oh, uh, this guy's good. I don't think that will though. Wow, Barter and Blood and Thunderstaff. The two cards I was considering taking came back. That's interesting to me. I'll take Thunderstaff. I think we actually play this now. <laughs> I feel like it's pretty easy. Chris, have a good night, buddy. I want to take out the Cone of Flame and the other guy so that we don't actually have to rely on double red. And Iron Chef Sammy, have a good night, buddy. Evernight Shade we can take out. So we're going to bring, we have this, we're going to bring in you, we're going to add one forest, so it's two, three sources of red with the Grave Upheaval. Actually, we can take out Breaker of Armies, that's, that's kind of cute. We can bring something else in instead. What's that sideboard layout? What do you mean? What are you asking me right now? So we have Merciless Execution, or we have a Weapons Craft Enthusiast, which is good. Is that good with the Thunder Staff, though? If a creature would deal combat damage to prevent one of it, that seems really strong. I'm going to bring that in, because our deck is just wanting to survive, I think. All right, so we'll play one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, six, nine. That seems good. Also, Savage Lane is perfect for our deck, because it gives us more of everything. Actually, we can probably play one extra. Because this is already six red. All right, let's do that. This deck seems good, but I thought I thought all of our decks seemed good in the cube so far, and uh, that has not borne out, so. That has not Jason borned out. Oh yeah, we'll keep this hand all day. This guy into this guy, and we got a Death Wind. Good. Oh, why are you right there, Mulligan Button? And then I just kept this out of shame. I was like, no, I can't go to five when my first hand was so good. Yeah, any swamp, and we're okay. I'll, I'll deal with it if we can hit a swamp. Preferably next by next turn. So, yeah. Yeah, that's always fun. Oh, all right. Now I'm feeling better about our our life choices here. Okay. I think I figured out why your decks lose. Was it because I accidentally mulliganed in this one particular game? Was that why my decks lose? Because that's interesting. No blocks. That's actually a great draw. It is literally a cube of only uncommon cards. That is correct. Okay. 
I think I'm just gonna give you a one one here because I really don't want you to go uh, go ham with this gifted Aetherborn on me. So. Plus our deck has no shortage of removal, so. Dead with Truefolk and a Forest. Okay. Well, I'm not going to get in there, as you can imagine. Okay. Hey, look, it's my friend. Get in there with that sapper link. No? Interesting. Golgaria Germination seems actually pretty obnoxious. Depending on how many creatures you get, I guess. Enjoy your one one. Do I block this guy? Probably. I mean, this guy makes a one one, so sure. That's pretty good. Don't kill my 1-1. One, one. You know what? Sure. If you have removal on our turn, I mean, if you have removal, you can use it on our turn or your turn, I imagine. Unless it's sorcery speed. In which case, that's worse for us. But they also might not have known that it only costs one to crew, so. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. It's not great, but. Didn't really put them on Essence Scatter, so. He may also have deal three. Yeah, I mean, maybe, but what are you going to do? I thought it was actually more likely that they just didn't know the crew cost, so they might not have thought that we were going to crew, or they were just trying to get us to block with the Scion so we couldn't crew it, so. All right, so now we're just on the 1v1. <laughs> 1v1 damage per turn plan. So if they block, they actually get two guys, which is pretty interesting. So we're not going to bite for that. Three cards? That's a good amount. It's a nice creature. You draw X cards and lose where X is the number of counters on that creature. Okay, so it literally just kills it. Sure. I wonder if waiting for us to actually put counters on that guy would have been more beneficial. As it was just a 3-3. Three, three. 
Archers hoping they don't have him to Torok themselves. I guess we get to kill one guy, so it's a one for one at that point. But in losing Enslave is pretty brutal. And if they have him, it's just random anyway, so we could have actually discarded both cards and... Well, isn't that something? The universe is a simulation. <laughs> oh, Lord. It's actually pretty good. <laughs> That was a very good top deck. I mean, him is random anyway, so it's like you're, the, the percentage is like 33% that we get to keep. Jesus. Wow, and we had Enslave and we had Double Green. That's pretty good. Cast you one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Okay, so. Seems good. Silver Maith, I would love to help myself with my own stock portfolio. I wish I could predict the future. I wish I could predict stocks and bitcoins as well as I could predict uh, the top decks of my... It's going to be Blightning when they have no cards in hand. Ready? That's actually not terrible. Willie Tanner, thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. Welcome to the Sultai Brood. Yeah, this dinosaur is going to be pretty obnoxious to deal with, unfortunately. I have no incentive not to attack with these dinosaurs, so. Well, they didn't play in a card instead of a dinosaur. Like, they had 10 mana, so they made a dinosaur and played a card. So, not really, uh, they didn't really have to choose one or the other. They could do both. Yeah, but I mean, if, even if her brain is wired to play against sweepers, like, playing a treasure keeper into a sweeper is pretty decent. Yeah, at no point do you ever take this guy offline, I guess. So they get two 1-1s, one they get to flip a treasure keeper, and they get they actually get another 1-1 one -one after that, so that's pretty annoying, but their 1-1s one don't do much against us, so... They hit a fatal push. Decent. They kill a zombie. That's fine. Yep. All right. Well. <laughs> S 
super ironic that they had both Essence Extraction when we felt safe with blocking with the Untethered Express, and they had him to Torak after I called him them having him to Torak. Take three. Looking for one answer for this Thundering Spine. Yeah, I don't care about that. Thank you. Don't see it. CCT Dark, thank you so much for the three uh, 14 months in a row. Really appreciate it. Yeah, that's not going to do it. All right. Well, that being the case, let's... <sighs> My God, this cube has not been kind to us. Cone of Flame seems pretty busted here, actually. I took out a Merciless Executioner for it. This card actually performed quite well despite not being able to use the activated ability of it. Also, this don't forget this was a match where we uh, didn't mean to mulligan and then we mulliganed anyway, so it could have been I guess it could have gone better or worse. We actually ended up pretty well considering. Oh, we got a got a combo here, ladies and gentlemen. Ulcerate or fatal push. 100% fatal push. No longer have a combo. Yeah. Never fails. They don't have it last game when it's actually uh, terrible against us. This game they have it from the beginning. It'll take Ulcerate, right? Good job. A good job. I mean, we're playing into him here, but they have to have a second black and they have to have him. So the odds of that feels pretty low, but... Well, they're halfway there. They're halfway there. If only Bloodborne Vamp Bloodbond Vampire gained life whenever we gained counters whenever we lost life. That would be good with an Ulcerate and a Phyrexian and Gargantua in our hand. All right, that's fine. Living on a prayer, take my Gargantuan, we'll make it, I swear. That seems pretty okay. Oh, this hand is good now. Oh, it's actually worse against the stupid germination. Jesus. 
I'm actually terrible against this cube. I have no idea how do you actually win in this cube. I'm not good at it. I like it a lot, but it's I'm not clearly not good at it. We play Gatekeeper, they sacrifice Big Game Hunter and get a 1-1 out of it. That seems terrible. It's almost better to just play it by itself. I don't even think attacking is profitable here. Oh, am I going to SCG Atlanta at the end of the next month? Probably not. It is my birthday, so I have no real interest in driving eight hours to get there, but I wouldn't. Surprisingly good. Uh, Gonna flame does one damage to you. Two damage to you, three damage to you. Yeah, my birthday's end of June. Thank you for saying so, Willie Tanner. Really appreciate it. Like, they don't have ulcerate, so... Yeah, I'm not going to ulcerate that. That's fine. You're a real tough cookie with a long saproling and bringing little hats like the one in me. Here comes dinosaur. Dinosaur's coming. This card's surprisingly good. I mean, even if you don't like draw cards and lose life, like you're still just killing a guy, any creature for three mana. Oh, brutal. Don't need to drive. You start drawing now, you might get their three extra out of the fence over. Close enough, right? Yeah, not bad, not bad. It's a reasonable, reasonable uh, suggestion. Creature enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a creature. No. Oh, I guess it could sack itself, which actually gives you. That's actually real good. It gives you a German, too, guys. Well, that's a two turn clock. Okay, well, that's useless. All right. So we're probably going to terminate a guy just to give us a third, a fourth turn, I guess, because it's three, 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 and one instead of five and five. What would terminate it with explode on the stack do? That actually doesn't do anything. We terminate with explode on the stack. They get a one, one from this guy. Then they can choose to exploit this guy. Uh, they can exploit the 1-1 one, one, and they still get two two twos. Is that how that works? Yeah, because they would have still had a sapperling. So, I mean, they'd still have the same... It'd be the same situation, except we'd have a terminate less and... Uh, yeah, all right, cool. That was, that was good times. And by good times, I mean actually terrible times. Dead creatures can still exploit. That has... There's nothing... Uh, there's no reason they can't exploit just because they've killed them. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a triggered ability. It, it says, you know, when this creature enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a creature to do a thing. So he comes into play. They can sacrifice the thing to do a thing. Has no relevance whether the creature is still alive or not.
Yeah, I feel like we we didn't play our best that match. Like there were definitely some misplays there. Um, and I don't think I don't think this cube is very forgiving. I, I've I've come to realize. I'll keep this a good amount of the time. As long as we can hit some lands here, I think we're in good shape. This deck, this hand seems good. Well, that's a good card to draw, especially with Untether Express, but I'm not thrilled about the land sitch, land sitch we got going on here. So be it. Forest it is. We'll go the forest because we actually have a need of a forest. We only have actually, uh, well, we have need of a forest in the sense that like, we only have one other card that makes green mana. We have a bunch of other black cards, only one double black card in our hand, so. Let's make one ones. Also, this is a great guy to exploit, so. I could take three here. Sure. Just playing this because I really don't want this guy to flip so that all his creatures get plus one plus zero oh, and trample because that seems miserable. Flip, good sir. Oh, how nice. Wish I had a second black source at this point. However, we did draw the one green card in our deck, so maybe not. I don't know. So this guy's a five and this guy's a three. Okay. Guess we'll take seven and go to five, unless you have invigorated, rampant, invigorated, whatever it is. Of course you do. Go to one. <laughs> sure. Obviously. <laughs> Why wouldn't you have that? Oh boy. Good times, guys. We're having good times here on oh, Magic the Gathering Online. Bring in the Code of Flame. Take out you for another mountain. I don't foresee us wanting Ulcerate in this bloody matchup. It does kill like a 3-3, but... 
God, it would cost. Peace Strider seems good, I guess. Better than Blood Bond Vampire. Seriously? Sure. Oh, trust me, me calling the shots and knowing what happens has no uh, has no positive impact. It just means that I, I call the exact worst thing that can happen, and then it comes true. So, there is no upside to that, I assure you. Thunderstaff seems very good against Young Pyromancer. And Reckless Waif. I poked around, I think I was right. I'm talking about exploits because they're worded in two parts. They need to see themselves exploit the thing, kind of like City C used to be. Oh, I see. Interesting. Huh. Wow. Yeah, good call then. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, the, the problem is, like, you're still able to exploit it. It just doesn't do anything because the creature isn't around for the effect to... Yeah, that makes sense, actually. Oh, good call, Master Jareth. Good call. Sure. Wow. Oh boy, when your opponent never doesn't have it all. Sure. We got two, three lightning strike it. You got an artifact? Oxidus scrap melter it. Yeah, exploit's a really messy ability. We also had some troubles our pre-release with exploit. This is terrible. I don't actually want to play that guy at all. They just sacrificed the elemental token, and then we have to lose a 2-1 for it. That seems really bad. Pretty sure not playing this guy is just worse. Wait, this guy? I mean, how is that risky, though? That doesn't make sense. I mean, if you don't have any of your own artifacts, then it doesn't do anything. Like, it's just a trigger. That was a good one. <laughs> that was a good hit. I mean, there's a lot of artifacts in this queue as well. There's vehicles, there's uh, lots of mana rocks, there's a lot of creatures. Like, this guy almost always has a target. And if they don't, like, I don't think we've seen a single artifact from our opponent. So, I don't know where the risk is. Holy shit, can you have can you have it anymore? That's unbelievable, dude. This is incredible. Yeah, I guess that's two. Good call, good call. Um. Oh, interesting. Oh, you just have invigorated growth or whatever it is. Sure. Really? It's an interesting trade. Sure, gutter snipe.
to the surprise of no one. Uh, one, two, three. Just play Merciless. Yep. Very aggressive. I actually have one card. Get rid of. So three, four, five, six, seven we take. Yeah, this is actually fine. We get to draw a card. We get to fatal push. So we get to draw two cards here. It's a good one to draw. That's uh, an okay one to draw. One, two, three. Yep, make your guys. You got it. Draw a card. Death one would have been good to keep up because then we can actually draw an extra card, but I kind of want to get this down in case we draw a creature. Plus it's four mana, so if we if we committed four mana next turn, we still only have three to work with, so. Yep, you can flip. Oh my goodness gracious. Um one, two, three. What is happening right now? Draw a card. Hey, look at that. Dark Death Reap Ritual is keeping us in the game. This is why you don't take this card out. Yeah, Kona's pretty broken right there. I'm actually tempted to death win this guy just to draw a card. But if they play something bigger, it's really bad for us. I think we can take one. Yeah, I'd much rather kill that. Deals one damage to each of the two target creatures. Okay. Well. We actually don't need the... The green is just basically colorless man at this point. Could have waited for them to transform it, but I don't care. Like, I'd rather just draw the card now so that we have the potential to draw something else like that, which is very good. Opponent didn't misclick ability. Sad days. I'm going to take one and go to six here and just Batuminous Blast EOT so that in case they play something bigger, we can kill that. Like that. Actually, it's at the beginning of each end step, so now we don't get to draw the card. Oh, that was a very good hit, though. So we just wasted a card. That's unfortunate. Because we don't have triggers that... We don't know how triggers work, unfortunately. So now we get to die, unfortunately. <laughs> because we didn't play the cards correctly. We should have done it in the main phase because we knew they had they were out of cards. Like that was just a misclick on our part because we should have actually played it uh, correctly. All right, go to eight.
Discard an enthralling victor. I'm surprised you didn't just play that. All right, this train wins us the game next turn. Can we train? Even if they block, it still kills them, so that's good. I'm surprised this game went the way it did. Thank you, Death Reap Ritual, for letting me draw 15,000 cards. I don't think there's a 7-mana spell there. This is where they top deck smash to smithereens. Is that an uncommon at any point? Okay, they just made us do it. A lot of lands here. A lot of lands here, guys. All right, so... <sighs> Almost tempted to play the white for, like, survival cash. Pious Evangel. It doesn't seem great, though. Um, Dance with Devils actually seems pretty good here. I can bring a Dance with Devils in. I can see cutting like the Blightning, to be quite honest. We have a lot of life gain to be... Ah, uh, Merciless... Merciless Executioner doesn't seem great. Man, my kingdom for a marsh casualties. This is two guys in one. That seems good. That also kills things that we like. I think that's good. All right, we'll try it like this. Oh boy, boy, oh boy, ha huh? Oh, this is good. This hand is good. I will keep it. And they mulligan to seven, so that's pretty good. What up, Selena Gomez Prime? Did he say they mulligan to seven? That doesn't even make any sense. Yeah, that card's annoying. Can we get a removal for it? No. No, you cannot. Okay. Well, that's unfortunate. I regularly play 40 cards. 41 cards. That is correct. I love when people say 41 cards like they like they like they just saw a ghost. I've been taught my whole life that 40 is the only correct number to play. I don't understand. I'm at peak confusion right now. What are the odds this Vampire Nighthawk survives? Zero. No, I want to kill that thing real bad. Give me another swamp. One swamp, one time. Come on. Come on. Yeah! That's actually pretty good. Either one of these creatures is great to kick. And by kick, I mean kill. Kill with the kick. Shades are pretty close to ghosts. That's actually fair. That's a good point. Oh, why does he play 41 cards? Oh, he's going to regret it. He's going to draw his worst card. I'm gonna take three damage and this guy's gonna flip no he's not gonna flip fascinating oh him to Torach him to Torach so if we draw another swamp next turn we can go vampire into him I'm pretty sure we're just going Evernight Shade because it's got a big bottom Big bottom shade, you make the rockin' world go around. That's terrible. Just terrible. Sure. So we can actually go double block here and feel good about it. Even if they kill one of them, we'd get a 2-2 back. And next turn we can put two in his blast, which should put us in good shape. But, you know. Or they could lightning bolt it right now. Shock it right now. No attacks. I am not the beat down here. 
Oh, they didn't do anything. Shade is a 1-1, one, one, and that dies and becomes a 2-2. Two, two. What do you mean, what are you missing? What are you asking here? It's got Undying. Comes back with a counter on it. Then it's a 2-2. Two, two. <laughs> undying is the relevant part, yes. And it pumps. Like, it does a lot of things. It's basically two, two, two creatures in one. All right, well, now we have Bit Blast up, so we can actually pass here. What are you going to do? Lightning strike. Oh, that's just so sad. So now we got a strike out of your hand. So we can kill this guy. And cast this fine gentleman. Servos all day. And you get to transform back because... Because you suck, that's why. This is a hard creature to deal with, though. Like, now all our guys do not block profitably. Oh, it's a little mortar pod. Oh, what a little cutie. Isn't that adorable? You got it. Comes back. Yeah, now we're in him to Torok time. Probably more so once you equip this. Or once you play something else. Yeah, that's fine. I wonder if they did miss the Undying. That would be hilarious because Undying is like the best part of this card. Like, otherwise you don't play a 1-1 one, one for 4 just because it pumps. Oh boy. Oh boy. Nah, I'm still going to him you. You have two cards. We good. Victor and Rampage. Seems okay. Pass. This is the part where we probably can't lose. He said ambitiously. I actually want to land here. Um, we can go Nighthawk and keep up Terminate. I'm pretty sure we just want Reap Ritual here. Reap Ritual, as the kids say. I'll pass. <laughs> I'll make your Mortar Pot a liability here. Dancing with the Devils. Remember that Van Halen song? Dancing with the Devils? Oh, I guess the flip now? Dang. Oh, dang. So if we go to terminate, they go to shoot something? That's sad. Oh, we can play Choo Choo here. We are not in uh, any kind of position to, like, if we just, I don't want to terminate just so we can shoot it. I don't want to trade a servo and a terminate for a flame heart werewolf. See, now I probably will. <laughs> because it draws us a card. I would have drawn us a card last turn, too, I guess. They can also shoot this guy once, and then, yep, that's what they're going to do. And then equip it to, like, a goblin and kill it again. Shoot him again. You got it. That is not going to be my long game. Shoot him again. Shoot him again. Oh, that's not... This is not going to end the way you want it to, my friend. 
Oh, what does this get us back? Let's see. Gatekeeper, Evan Night Shade. Eh, nothing I care about. That should be the end. They're probably just like Vampire Night Knock, I'm out. I was hoping you wouldn't be able to crew anything. That's pretty good. And that's pretty good. At 15 life, we get the concession. Our deck's pretty cool. X1s are pretty rough, but uh, otherwise our deck seems pretty okay. Cone of Flame has been pretty epic every single time we've, we've had it, so I might actually want to take one Swamp out, add a, cone of, add a mountain for that Cone of Flame. I think Nightshade is probably just better than Blood Bond Vampire. We'll try it with these changes, see if we can 2 1. Keep. Keeps, mix, sneeps. Carrier Thrill on the Merciless Executioner is pretty good. We gotta make him. We gotta make him sack all the things. Sack all of your your most prized possessions. No swamp. Okay. Yeah, good old timber gorge. Oh, expedition crap, am I right? Yes, you're right. This guy's great with Merciless Executioner. I will make servos. Double Q and casual commander? What's wrong with you? That sounds terrible. Just just not just out of confusion, not out of a fun level, but just out of like, my god. How do you handle it? No creatures, huh? Give me a land. Oh, that's a good card. Ah, oh, 1v1 commander would make more sense, but not confirmed yet. Let's see what you get. Let's see if you get your fourth color here. You get any land too. That's that's OP, man. That is your fourth color. Comical fourth color. Uh, yeah, there's no Drunk Mob Swamp or Sneezy Mike because, I don't know who Sneezy Mike is, because, uh, it is 1 a.m. here. Alright, that's actually extremely obnoxious, and I, as a black deck, I really have no answers for that, so. That is really annoying.
They missed a land drop. Do we do this like counter spell? I guess we just play this guy and hope they don't counter it. All right, draw two. Seems good. Four four seems stronger than one ones. So, you know, you take a turn off and uh, you do a little thing. Propaganda is pretty obnoxious. Valor stance, sure. Like you do. I'll tap one red. Sunset Pyramid, sure. So seven mana, so we're just gonna play Shade and attack for two here. Hot and fresh out the kitchen. Oh yeah, I know, I get sneezy, Mike. That was hilarious. I agree with you, that was ridiculous. I actually wanted to clip that, but I didn't know where it would be in the draft. So I was like, oh God, I can't even find this. Because I thought that'd be a hilarious clip. Oh, what up, Matthew Ori? Hmm. All right, so you went Sunset Pyramid into Orzhov Signet. Is this Nightshade going to go the distance? Give me a land so I can attack with... Two creatures, three creatures, four creatures. I don't actually want to land. I could care less. That's a basically a blank at this point. Paying the two for this guy is almost the same as pumping the shade twice. So we just get better value off of attacking with both. Sure. All right, take six, go to three, ideally, unless you have a bouncy bounce or a removey move. Oh, you do. Good for you. <laughs> sure. Typical Hooter D. So like Hooter D. Wait, Matthew, or when did you say Chicken Sunday ends? The answer is never. Oh, it begins again at 12. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Now we're getting somewhere. Now it all makes sense. <laughs> it's just for a fraction of a second. Now the aura, I didn't know you were such a chicken Sunday expert. They have six cards in hand. They didn't do anything? This is all very confusing. Is this where the Aether Eyes happens? Boy, Aether Eyes would be rough. For an artifact, create two one one sappy boys. I 
I'll counter your spell. Oh, one mana counter spell. I'm going to assume this is going to get the job done next turn. Oh, you got another thing. You're just full of surprises, aren't you? All right, so you go to four. Sure. Get out of here with that guy. All right, so there are three. So as long as we can resolve this cone of flame, we get to do the world a favor and put the pop propaganda deck out of its misery. All right, that is one fewer options you have. Uh-oh, something magical is happening to us all one two three four five deal one damage to myself two damage to this guy three damage to your face and you have died get him all right somebody bring it in here freebooter seems good ulcerate seems actually ulcerate seems better than fatal push here uh Gatekeeper seems okay. Merciless Execution seems bad. I don't want to take out all the removal because they do have some creatures. I wish I was a deck that had an answer to a uh, enchantment. But I don't. Doomfall seems great. Let's bring a Doomfall in. And eh, we can take out Ulcerate. I could care less about an Ulcerate. Actually, Essence Extraction is probably worse than Ulcerate because you want to take care of the... We saw Wolfer Silverheart as one of their few creatures. And if we're going to leave a three damage card in here, that's probably the better one to do. Actually, Thunderstaff seems... Eh, it's okay, I guess. The ability... The, the, the pump ability is pretty reasonable. And we're just hoping they don't have either... Um, what do you call it? Seed Spark, I guess. Is that, what, is that what we're talking about? I don't know. Either way, this hand is keepable. Turn 2 Freebooter into turn 3 Nighthawk, ideally... I, yeah, I did like I did like swift foot, swift foot boots actually. Swamp, swampums, wampum and swampum. That is not even close to a swamp. Are you going to be a swamp? You are not a swamp either. Oh, a ghostly prison, eh? Well, I'll be the first one to take that guy. So, what do you got? Woodland Stream. Can't please leave. Um, you got four cards. 
Why it reveals them twice, I don't know, but Magic the Gathering is a game that we all play and enjoy. You ever listen to Muppets Bohemian Rhapsody? I have not listened to Muppets Bohemian Rhapsody. That sounds amazing, though. Frontier Bivouac. Swampums McPlease. Thank you. That was a good, good Topums McDeckums. Top of the McDeckums to you. So they are two mana away from, uh, well, one mana away from Cunning Spark Mage and Zealous Persecuting. So they're probably going to get a swamp here, a black mana. Happy Memorial Day to everybody. It is Memorial Day, isn't it? And by that I mean because it's now midnight. I'll get a Swampums, McMompums. Yep. So predictable. <laughs> wow. Nice draw. Do I have anything to do here? I guess not. <sighs> and the problem is they're just going to play uh, Cunning Spark Mage and Zealous Persecution this turn. And they're going to be able to deal two to this guy, which is really obnoxious to get back their ghostly prison. Yep, swamp gone. So we don't have anything to do next turn, so we might as well not ulcerate. If they're going to let us go to combat, or go to our turn, we can actually just mount in here. And play... Gatekeeper Malachar could also be good. Shoot in response. Yep. This, is, this deck is really obnoxious. Propaganda Ghostly Prison deck is not fun to play against. Interesting choice, because now I get to deal... Oh, it's actually... Oh yeah, never mind. It does a different thing. Alright, so we know one card in your hand, I guess. <laughs> Alright, well. Ghostly prison. Just kind of gargantuan here because skipping one turn to deal two. Um, I'd rather deal start dealing four regularly. Plus, we have six mana, so once we get to eight mana, we can attack with two creatures, which is actually pretty reasonable. Hmm. That was actually a good draw. <laughs> Make them discard their last two cards and still get to choose one of the creatures to attack with, presuming they counter, not counter this, but kill a guy in response. Oh, that's totally fine. What to say, I'll say it anyway. I feel like our deck's gonna 2-0 today. Miling away. On another okay cone of flame, cone of flame. It's 
Well, that was unfortunate. Kind of just want this. Uh, one, two, three, four. And then also rate this guy. And we can't attack, but we can do it next turn. We'll just draw a card here. Now we get to a, to a point where we have nine lands, so we can go Bituminous Blast and attack, which is nice. Also a thing. Seed Spock on your death reap ritual. It's one of my, it's my last card in hand. Oh, that's obnoxious. Can't be regenerated though, so. Oh, I dare you to regenerate him. <laughs> Deal. Eh, this is not going to work how you think it works. I'll draw another card, sure. Oh, that's a guy. So next turn we can attack and play that guy after combat. Oh, what up, Melvin? Oh, yeah, I guess we're just going to attack here. I feel like we're in good shape, but it's hard to say. Magic is a tricky game. One, two, three, four. Let's, let's call some graves. deal oh yeah i'll draw a card too man what value the value is so real right now we have lethal on board and we got this cone of flame i think we're done here all right not bad not bad i didn't think our deck was gonna do it because after that first round it was pretty uh pretty rough but uh next two rounds seem to work out this cube is really interesting i like it a lot i just think it's actually you have to learn the specific nuances like there's a lot of enchantments and artifacts that are hard to deal with um, Tethered Express is one of them. Uh, the Double Propaganda, Propaganda Ghostly, Ghostly Prism is also another one. So, I don't know. I think this cube is great. I just think it takes some getting used to to figure out how to value things because the valuations are, are way different. Gravecrawler, Gravecrawler is a dumb card. Either way, thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Sign those like and subscribe buttons. Uh, check out my Patreon page. It's in the description. And I'll see you guys next time.